So not only are there four requirements to be a binomial, there are four items that get plugged into the binomial formula. So the first of those is n, and n represents the number of trials. So like we're picking 20 M&Ms. Next, we have x, and this is the number of successes in n trials. So like if we want three red M&Ms, then x is going to be three, because it's how many out of the 20 M&Ms that we're looking at. Notice it's not probability of getting a red M&M, just how many red M&Ms. And also, x is always going to have to be less than n. Think about it. If you're picking 20 M&Ms, how could 23 of them be red if you're only picking 20? So sometimes that might help you. Now, they could be the same. You could be looking for 20 red M&Ms out of 20 that you pull. But also, these are going to be whole numbers, so that might give you a little bit of a hint. Next, we have p, the probability of one success. So not the number you're looking for, not three red M&Ms, but just the probability any one M&M is red. Q is one minus P, so the probability of one failure, the probability of not getting a red M&M. So really it's just taking the complement of success. And these will consist of decimal or fraction numbers. So let's go ahead and actually solve a couple of these. Just looking for the parts, not even using the formula yet. 5A says, assume that 80% of flights arrive on time. Test 15 flights and find the probability that 10 arrive on time. So I always think it's best if I know what I'm looking for, and so what do we define as success? And here, it's a flight arrives on time. Not necessarily 10 of them, just when we look at this set of 15 flights, we're going to say, did you arrive on time? Yes or no. Arrive on time? Yes or no. So that question I'm asking is, did the flight arrive on time? N is the fixed number of trials. How many flights are we looking at? 15. X is how many we're hoping arrived on time. In this case, it's exactly 10. P is the probability of success. So the probability that one flight landed on time. Now, I wrote 0.8, which is 80%, but I'm going to have to be putting this into a formula. So whether you're given a percent or a fraction, it's always best to change to the decimal format because you're going to use it into a uh, formula, unless it's a non-ending fraction. And so Q would be 0.2, the complement of P. Next example, 5B. What is the probability of getting eight questions correct on a 10-question multiple choice test with choices A through F? So to be clear, I want to know what success is. And because I want the probability of getting eight questions correct, then I'm going to define success that way, a correct answer. Remember, n is the number of things we're looking at. So in this case, we're looking at 10 questions on the test. x is the number that we want, in this case, to be correct. And so there would be eight correct we're looking for. The probability that any one question is correct, well, in this case, it's going to be one-sixth. And the reason I say that is if you count the letters A through F, there are six choices, and we're assuming that only one can be correct. So the fa probability of failure, Q, would be five-sixths, because I'm taking the complement and subtracting, which is subtract one subtracted from the probability, but it's basically the rest. If one out of six is correct, then five out of six are incorrect. And let's go ahead and look at this last one, because this one throws people off a little bit. You really gotta pay attention. If 86% of college graduates start a new job after graduating, what is the probability that 12 out of 130 graduates do not get a job? Success? Here is somebody not getting a job. So that a graduate does not get a job. Even though it tells us in the beginning the percent that do get a job, we have to be careful about what we're looking for. So the number of people we're looking at, 130. How many do we want to meet this definition of success? How many people don't get a job? 12. Now remember, P is the probability of success. So it ends up being 0.14 because 80% is how many do get a job, but I need people who don't get a job. I need the complement of that number. 
So the 86 that provide is provided, that's actually the failures. <laughs> that's the people who get a job. This is where I was saying, be, don't get hung up on the word success and failure. 